In today's video, we're going to take a look at California's historic Highway S2, which largely follows the same route that people have been traveling to get into California for hundreds of years. The road travels from Ocotillo, California in the south, up to the intersection of Highway 79 near Warner Springs in the north. In addition to the beautiful scenery that is abundant during the drive, the road is filled with tons and tons of history. A good portion of Highway S2 parallels an old trail known at times as the Sonora, Colorado River, and Southern Immigrant Trails, which was a major route into California for a number of travelers in the 18th and 19th centuries. In fact, it was briefly the most popular route into California during the gold rush of 1849. We began our journey in the desert town of Ocotillo, going from south to north like travelers would have during the pioneer days. Ocotillo is also a great place to fill up on gas and get snacks as there's not a lot of options along the highway. Ocotillo was not on the Southern Immigrant Trail, but was on historic Highway 80, and so there's a lot of old service stations, an abandoned road in the area to check out as well. Immediately after leaving Ocotillo, you find yourself in pretty barren desert, and there's not many other cars on the road at all. Though there are lots and lots of wind turbines. You also will occasionally find kiosks along the side of the road, such as this one at the trailhead for the wind caves, which is a pretty neat geological feature in Anza Borrego State Park. And speaking of Anza Brago State Park, immediately after a small border patrol checkpoint, you find yourself in the park itself. Once you get into Anza Brago State Park, the desert views are absolutely stunning. And because the S2 gets less traffic than other roads through the park, you have the views pretty much all to yourself. We were there on a Saturday and there was hardly any other people, which is really great for social distancing. If you enjoy desert scenery, the drive through Anza Brego State Park makes taking the S2 worth the trip alone. Eventually you'll come across Canyon Sin Nombre, which means canyon without a name in Spanish. Though I guess technically that is a name, so it's kind of an oxymoron, but it's still a great place to take a four-wheel drive vehicle, or go on a hike, or even just stop and wonder about the name. After climbing out of Carrizo Canyon in Anza Brego State Park, the S2 begins to overlap the historic trails, and you can find a marker where the Great Southern Overland Stage Route of 1849 and the S2 meet. We'll now be following roughly the same route that was used by the Spanish, was part of the Mexican Mail Route, was used by Kit Carson, and General Stephen Watts Kearney and his Army of the West brought troops into California at the time of the Mexican-American War. You can even go off the pavement onto the old stagecoach route and see what life would have looked like for those early pioneers. Aside from the dirt road being in a lot better condition than it would have been back then, everything else probably looks exactly the same as those pioneers would have seen it. And speaking of the stagecoach, our next stop is the Vallecito County Park, which is a San Diego County Park that has a number of campsites, hiking trails, and a reconstruction of the Vallecito Stagecoach Station. There is a historical marker at the site. The original stagecoach station was built in 1852. The building that is there now is a reconstruction that was built in 1934. It really gives you a great idea what a desert stagecoach station would have been like. Unfortunately, due to the current pandemic, we couldn't go inside the building, though during normal times, it is open and you can get a look inside of the building and get an idea of what life would have been like at the stagecoach station. And although we couldn't go inside the station, there were plenty of informational signs at the entrance to give us an idea of the history of the area. There was also another plaque on the door as well that I believe is original to the 1930s. As we continue through the desert past the Vallecito Stagecoach Station, it's worth talking a little bit more about the history of the road. 
While the trail the S2 follows had been in use since the 1700s and was even part of the Mexican mail route in 1826, it didn't become a road that wagons could take into the interior of California until 1847, which brings us to our next stop. It's pretty easy to miss the marker for Box Canyon. It's not that visible from the road, but in my opinion, Box Canyon is one of the coolest stops on Highway S2. About 100 feet or so from the historical marker, there's an overlook with some more information, though you can't really get a good look at Box Canyon from there, and it's well worth it to walk the extra distance to go into the canyon. And here we are looking down into Box Canyon. So what makes Box Canyon so special? Box Canyon is how the trail became a road. The Mormon Battalion, which was the only religious unit in American military history, served from July 1846 to July 1847 during the Mexican War. They used hand tools they had with them to carve out a passage large enough to let their wagons through. Now as we approach the canyon wall from the bottom, along the same trail the stagecoaches would have taken, we'll get a closer look at the area that was carved by hand by the Mormon Battalion. You can see where they carved into the side of the canyon in order to hoist their wagons up the canyon walls. And here you can kind of get a sense of scale as our son waves to Jessica, who did not want to walk to the bottom. And here's a look at the canyon wall, where you could still see the chisel marks where the path was hand carved. As you leave Box Canyon and head into Shelter Valley, you start to see a lot more vegetation. The road is making a slow, gradual climb to higher elevations. Just north of the small town of Shelter Valley, you come to Scissors Crossing, which is probably the busiest intersection on the S2. There is a historic marker for the Viacito Butterfield Stage Station at the intersection as well. At Scissors Crossing, the S2 briefly travels along Highway 78 before separating again at San Felipe Road. This is also where the Pacific Crest Trail, the hiking trail that goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border, crosses the 78. Once you're past Scissors Crossing, you quickly leave the desert scenery behind as you begin to enter the mountains. Part of what made this route so appealing to the pioneers that came during the gold rush in 1849 was not having to cross the Sierra Nevada mountains. Teofolio Summit, which I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly, is the highest point on the S2 at 3,646 feet, which is a much lower elevation than you would find on any pass through the Sierra Nevada mountains. After the summit, you begin to come across mountain plains, which surely would have reminded a lot of the pioneers from the Midwest of the land they left behind. Our last stop on Highway S2 is Warner's Ranch, which was also an important stop on the earlier trails as well. General Kearney stopped there on his way to the Battle of San Pasqual. The Mormon Battalion stopped there. Travelers on the Southern Immigrant Trail, as well as the Butterfield Overland Mail Stagecoach Line all stopped there as well. In 1844, John Warner was given a Mexican land grant and started his cattle ranch at this location. Two of the original adobe buildings from the pioneer days still stand, one from 1849 and the other from 1857. Warner's ranch was declared a California historical landmark in 1939 and a national historic landmark in 1961. And here we are at the intersection of Highway 79 the end of Highway S2. In all, the highway is about 65 miles in length and makes a great day trip. The scenery is absolutely outstanding and there is a ton of history to experience on the road. There's a lot to see and do on the S2 and it's great if you want to get away from other people because you won't see a lot of other cars for the majority of the drive. We highly recommend you take a trip on Highway S2 if you get the chance. It's definitely one of the best drives in San Diego County. 
Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.